next? Hmm. Yeah. What's your name, bro? Melvin. Melvin. Yeah. A round of applause for Melvin. Good to meet you, man. Hop on up. Melvin, where are you from, Melvin? Uh, Denmark. Oh, very cool, man. Thanks for coming down here. So I live in England, so... Oh, you got it. I'm from Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> and how old are you? 16. Yeah, you look 16. <laughs> um, so, basically, I uh, went through a phase in my life where I... Throughout my entire life, my mum's a writer of health and fitness and uh, in Scandinavia. So, I grew up very healthy and all those sort of things. And so, uh, when I went into the teenage years, I thought like I hadn't experienced a lot of things. So, I went into getting into the wrong crowds and like doing drugs and cigarettes and smoking from the age of 12 until about 14. Um, and when I was 14, my mum obviously found out that mm -hmm. I've been doing all these things. Um, and so we moved here to England um, and I've been uh, kind of, I was closed down from the age of 14 until 15 and about a half. Um, and then I found out what I wanted to do. I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, both of my parents have their own businesses. Um, and so I found, found out what I wanted to do and so I started a YouTube channel and I have been selling on Amazon like private labeling and stuff for a couple of months now. Um, but I feel like I'm struggling with, I still have those contacts from when I was like in that bad space. Um, and I still I struggle with not caring what they think and um, kind of ignoring their like uh, inputs of what my life should be like. They Your old friends? Yeah, exactly. They want me to be the same. Are they in also. England or they're still no, in Denmark? they're still in Denmark. Oh, um, so how are they? Well, the thing is, um, when I moved here first, all of my holidays were spent in Denmark. And I didn't socialize here or anything because I didn't. I still wanted to be that person until I realized what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so here in England, I only, only uh, a couple of months ago, I moved back to Denmark um, to because I thought that was what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but I realized, like, I came back to those friends and I realized this is not what I want. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're still like the, the social group that I have at the moment mm -hmm. I only just like a couple of weeks ago literally moved back here to England and um, you go back and forth yeah because my dad is still in Denmark ah okay when did your parents split uh, I was very young I think I was eight or nine or something like that mm -hmm. and I've, I've gotten through I've also when I was younger I don't know if that could have anything to do with it but um, my brother had infantile autism um, and was like very like very extreme so it was he couldn't go on a walk with us unless he was in a like a dog leash literally because he, he thought he was a dog and so on and so I didn't get any attention everything was put on my brother and I allowed that from I've been told obviously I don't remember but when I was very young I didn't get any attention until about five or six years old and so I think that attention maybe have gone into that friend friend mm -hmm. group and the bad people there um, but the thing is basically they're the friends that I have at the moment and they're the ones that I talk to still and there's still some people that I still respect and still think that I should I, some of them I, I like they're not all drug users and cigarettes and sure so I still have some people who I uh, respect and still talk to who I've been friends with since I was very young um, and I just they also don't really respect because obviously most of them don't know what to do with their lives mm -hmm. uh, they're all still just, you know, obviously, because they're 16. They're all about 16 years yeah. old also? Yeah. 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 16, 15, 17, mm -hmm. around that age. So they don't know what to do, and I think it might have something to do with that they're kind of jealous that I know what, what I want to mm. do. But I just want to know, like, how do I get over not caring what they think? Also, when I'm here, and I'm here, but I'm also quite a lot in Denmark, so I still talk to them. So I want to be able to, like, deflect whatever they have to say about what I, what I do. So what are, you, what are you private labeling? Well, whatever sells, basically. Yes, yeah, so what are you able to sell? Uh, right now, I bought like a, a m on Alibaba in China, I bought some m like mom shirts that you can have your baby in. Uh, you mm -hmm. bought like 500 of those for $3. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can sell them for $29 or something like that. So yeah, and how's that going? 
very well. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Get rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sell a fuckload of those mom shirts. Yeah. And then sh and then show up at your friends like with your expensive watch and cool car and be like, hey guys, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Don't you want to be like me now? You just turn the tables. Yeah. Focus yeah. on what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to resist them at all. They're all the way, especially if you're distant, you know, if they're all the way up in, in Denmark and you're here, you don't have to resist them, you don't have to fight against them, you don't have to push them away. You just, it's like I mentioned before, you could either choose to run away from something or run towards something. Either way, you're going that way, you know, that way, that way, you know. So rather than thinking like, what do I got to do to deal with these guys? Resistance, they say, well, you resist, persist. Resistance keeps you ta attached to them. But turning and focusing your attention on where you're going and what you're doing is 10 times more powerful. You know? So I would say take your time, energy, effort, and, uh, and resources and direct them towards selling a lot of stuff on Amazon, building your YouTube channel. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Done. <laughs> Good. One second. Uh, yeah, and so by the, the fact that you're 16 and uh, you did everything the opposite of your, your mom is perfect. Yeah, like you did, you did the complete opposite of what she wanted you to do, huh? Yeah, that's how you assert yourself. If there's no process by which boys become men, we do it ourselves by being bad boys. You know, and uh, that's okay. And I think all teenagers do that. Like... I am a big meat eating promoter and my daughter's a vegan. <laughs> She's 14 years old. It's like, what, what are you doing? You're the opposite of me. And I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm not going to fight with her, but it makes sense. You know, go the opposite. So the same thing with your friends. The same way you resisted your mom and you said, hey, I'm not eating that healthy food shit and I'm going to go smoke cigarettes. You do that with your friends. I'm not smoking cigarettes and fucking with you guys. I'm getting rich. You're just substituting one drug for another, but rich is better than broke smoker. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was something related? Was it you? No, it's not related. Mm -hmm. Anything related before? Yeah? Um, I was just going to say, I've, uh, I've, I guess, younger had like a model upbringing and decent parents, all of that. And when I was about 19, I went to like a rave and I was like, fuck it, I'm going to get pills, I'm going to take it all. I had about two, three years of a blood out as well. Um, but I look back on it and think some of those were the best times of my life. As much as they've caused issues like anxiety later on, for each way. I look back on that, I think some of those times I've never regretted. I think they were unbelievable. And when you're younger, you can do it. You can kind of do things, get away with it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you survive or don't make any decisions <laughs> that destroy your life. But yeah, I get it. I've survived. Now I'm on places like this. So. Mm -hmm. Very cool. It's related. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he asked you about what other people think. Don't you think that sometimes uh, what other people think is also important? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The world is our mirror. Yeah, I don't think we can get away from dealing with other people. You know, what other, pe other people's projections upon us are present. You know, whether or not we allow them to unseat us, whether they allow, we allow other people to s persuade us and change us, that's a choice, but there will always be the stimulus of eyes, you know, and judgment. It's just the way it is. And when do you choose when to follow one or the other? Once again, coming back to your center. So not being distracted by the environment. It's easy to be distracted by the environment if I don't know where I am, who I am, and what I'm doing, you know? Like, so for example, I've been talking a lot like... <coughs> I always have, but I stopped for a while, and I think I was just trying to be a nice guy, talking about the red pill stuff that all of a sudden I got into when I started reading Rollo Tomasi. Anybody familiar with red pill and like Big Tao and like you know men going their own way, that kind of stuff? Uh, and so a lot of my emails and posts have been about that kind of stuff lately, and uh, and so I've been getting DMs from girls, pretty girls, that are angry. Elliot, I used to look up to you, and now I think you're a, a jerk, or you're a dickhead, you're a misogynist, and I don't care. You're not going to sway me because you're a pretty little girl who thinks that I should be talking about blue pill stuff and be a little bit more of a sissy for you. 
No, I'm talking to men. We're going to talk about men's stuff. And you can go and do your yoga back bend somewhere else. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I know that there's, there's a part of me or an older version of me that would have been like, oh. Like I would have been like, I would have been swayed. I'm like, maybe I should tone it down a little bit. 